accepting the invitation and you know I know that you you have uh, multiple activities that we would like to just continue uh, the conversation on, on, on cervical cancer you know sure. probably this is going to take uh, no more than 15 minutes of your time but uh, I've been reviewing some materials regarding the topic and some of the uh, prevention strategies mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, I have three or four questions that I would like to address. Sure. Uh, one of the questions is uh, if you provide or if the health center provides a primary prevention strategies, you know, to reduce the risk of uh, HPV infection, like for instance, a health uh, educa a sexual education or for boys or girls or the uh, condom promotion or education or, or any kind of uh, education strategy. We do during the regular well child with adolescents, mm -hmm. and we do at the school-based clinic offer just free condoms. We have free condoms here, but we offer them to all sexually active teenagers and also do the screening for GC and chlamydia in anyone who screens positive for sexual activity over the age of 12. Okay. What about the use of uh, condom, uh, Dr. Glove, is there anything that that you are promoting? We have them always available. Okay, so okay. We haven't done like a condom, uh, I don't know, awareness day or something. <laughs> <laughs> but the question is whether uh, it's part of the sexual uh, education, you know, specifically in teenagers and young uh, yes. uh, uh, patients. So they do education um, units over at the school-based clinic, which is high school. Mm -hmm. And we do have it on our mobile van that sees primarily um, middle to high school student age. So those kids definitely, and you know, when they see the doc here for regular well child and for any STD screening, obviously. Okay. Okay, good. thank you. This that's very helpful. Now, in regards to uh, secondary prevention strategies, uh, if you, when you have a patient and the patient is uh, tested for for either HPV or any um, or cervical cancer, and you find that the patient has a precancerous lesion, or uh, what 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 kind of service uh, do you provide? Uh, do you provide, for instance, counseling? Or, or is there any type of treatment that you do at the, uh, at the health center? Or if not, if you um, uh, uh, refer patients to a, uh, uh, another clinic where they can be treated? We have an on-site ob who does COPO mm -hmm. and does treatment. Okay. Obviously, if she can't manage it, she'll refer it out. But but you have never seen a case where where a patient needs more specialized uh, treatment, Dr. Lab? Well, if they need hysterectomy, they have to go to the hospital where the rob gynae will do that. They do okay. leaps. Yep. And you have uh, the agreement with the hospital, right, as part of the 19 program requirements? Well, she's our provider. So, ah, okay, okay, excellent. So be tiny. Excellent. What about um, the referral uh, mechanisms, uh, Dr. Glaff? For instance, if you have to refer a patient, how do you follow up the treatment that the patient has received? Well, we have a referral coordinator, but I think it's good practice just to bring the patient in about a month later, just to make sure they've gotten the connection. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have a case manager just for that. Do you use uh, for the electronic health records? Do you get like uh, results from from the hospital or anything when when, when a hospital. patient is referred? So we do not get all of them because the hospitals here in Chicago are not all on the same system or interconnected. Okay. So that's still a problem. And is. And you said that you don't provide uh, mobile services, right? For instance, a cancer, uh, breast cancer screening or cervical cancer screening. We do do yeah. cervical cancer screening. But 
is that uh, at the clinical site or do you offer those services outside of the clinical site? No, we do it at the clinic. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay, I've seen some um, some units, some mobile units, uh, some health centers provide some some kind of a screening outside of the clinic. And, uh, but you you mentioned that, that that is that's something that you are not offering, right? No. Okay. Okay. Now, is there anything, uh, Dr. Glab, that you believe uh, other health centers can benefit from uh, regarding this topic that you are doing, and and and, and, and they may. Um, get some kind of, gather some best practices from me. Well, I think if you've got an EMR that can send tickler uh, push out messages to patients who have portal use, that's what we've been trying to do is get more patients signed up to portal so they can get reminders. I think that helps. Okay, okay. That's interesting, you know, I was reading an article yesterday on on the use of portals on, on how to improve the health outcome of patients. That was from something from the American Academy of Family Practitioners. So I'm very glad to hear that you that you mentioned that. <laughs> I mean, they send them reminders now via text. So it's something that, you know, you can modify on your needs and even do campaigns. You know, this month is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, just a reminder, because it's a lot when they come in for something else, for patients to remember it all. Yeah, which which reminds me, I need to ask you a very technical question. Uh, when you report UDS uh, data and performance uh, and your performance measures, uh, some patients, I mean, this is a test that you don't, you, you, uh, this is uh, you don't screen your patient for cervical cancer every year. You know, so how how do you uh, make sure that the patient is not counted either twice or is not counted when you when you uh, uh, when you uh, report this measure? It, it, it's is that that you is, is that something that you do through your electronic health record? Uh, well, again, this is why I was saying I think it's important to review what the guidelines are because HRSA <clears throat> will want you to do that scrubbing by yourself. Mm -hmm. and so unless you set up your criterion in the EMR, then all of them are in there. So you can imagine what a nightmare it is for us now that we're trying to do UDS that's due in a week and a half, that people look at you and I ask, you know, how many deliveries do we have? And so the biller comes and says to me, well, I don't know. And so it's like, okay, but you need to have like a benchmark of where to go. That's why I brought that up, that HRSA as well needs to get on the page of, okay, so what group are we really looking for? And to my mind, honestly, the only group that they should be looking for are the patients that are higher risk and are HPV positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are the ones that are going to convert to abnormal cervical screening but you know it is what it is they give us the money and you have to give them the information the way they want it but it's a lot of work and you you know i have now two nurses but i went nine months with no nurse and they've never done uds so it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah i understand you know i am reviewing a document that i printed the other day and um there are basically guidelines for different organizations. You have the guidelines from the American Cancer Society. Right. You have the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force guidelines. Right. And then you have the American College of, College of Obstetricians guidelines. Right. And uh, even though they are similar, there, there are a couple of them that, 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 that you have to make sure that you are following the right one. You, right. So is, which yeah. of these guidelines is the most, or the one that you're using, do you know? Well, we go by ACOG. We go mm -hmm. by ACOG, but um, the UDS is a little more general. Mm -hmm. I think if you follow ACOG to the letter mm -hmm. and do the correct clinical thing, you probably will fall short of what HRSA wants. Yeah, yeah. I understand. 
you know, and, and this is a conversation that we that we're having. And, you know, there are things that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, these guidelines are from from Medicare, and, and then her size what they're trying to do is is to make sure that they are following or, or, or somehow getting the same kind of information based on the Medicare guidelines. Absolutely, because they have their own reporting to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. But you know, this is very, very helpful, and um, um, this is something that we are going to take into consideration and see if we can discuss discuss the uh, the cervical cervical cancer screening guidelines. So, uh, so I don't think that I have additional questions for you. Okay. Thank you so much again for all your help and for everything that you do for the for, your, for the population that you serve and for your.